welcome to uh, KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, Open Source Summit, China. Thanks for being here. We're really happy to see everyone. Um, today, I want to just get us started by reminding all of you how important open source is to the technology industry. I have been coming to China for almost 20 years. Uh, many times to see my very good friend, uh, Professor Liu uh, from Kopu, who's right here in the front row, uh, but also to spend a lot of time with Chinese developers, Chinese organizations, and every time I'm so impressed by the innovation that comes from China and the way that innovation gets taken into the global open source community. You know, open source is really one of the most effective enablers of innovation in the history of technology. Now, how do I know that? Because I have been lucky enough to be working at the Linux Foundation for most of my career and witness to how powerful open source software has become and how open source now is the majority of software in almost every major technology product or service. And even though we're here in China, what's interesting is open source software can come from anywhere. It can come from a dorm room in Finland. Linus Torvalds uh, began working on Linux when he was still in college in Finland. It can come from a university in the United States. The Apache web server uh, was created uh, from an offshoot of a project in uh, the University of Illinois in the United States. But it can also come from the world, one of the world's biggest telecommunications companies, uh, in this case, uh, our ONAP project, uh, which is based on uh, code from OpenO, a project created at China Mobile here in China. And it doesn't matter where it starts. What's interesting is that instantly everyone can have access to it because the internet enables instant distribution of this source code. And what's even better is anyone can participate, whether it's Linux, Apache, ONAP, Cloud Foundry, Kubernetes, you name it, Anyone can jump in and start contributing code and participating in these communities or come to events like this. And here's the most important part. Everyone benefits from this open source software. Everyone benefits. Competitors benefit each other. Everyone shares in the innovation that comes from it. This is a global movement that works, and it works incredibly well. And if you don't believe me, I brought some people with me this week who have been in open source from the very, very early days. Today we have Linus Torvalds here, who's been working in open source for 27 years. Uh, Ryan Bellendorf, one of the lead creators of the Apache web server, a founder of the Apache Software Foundation, is here this week. Dan Kahn, who did the first commercial transaction on the internet, uh, first secure commercial transaction on the internet, runs the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, one of the hosts of this week's events. And the whole Linux Foundation team is here as well. Abby Kearns from the Cloud Foundry Foundation, Arpit Joshipura from our networking group, and many, many more. Be sure to seek these folks out, meet them, and talk about how open source can work for you, your company, and everyone around you. You see, I know open source works because Linux has become the most important widely distributed software in the world. Linux is the best example of how open source eventually comes to dominate almost every form of computing. The supercomputer market, all the way to internet clients, mobile handsets, enterprise service, Linux is everywhere. 
Now, it's not just Linux. One of the best parts about my job is I've been able to witness two huge transformations in technology through open source. The first one is clearly Linux. It's an incredible project. The second one is newer, and it's Kubernetes and the cloud native computing movement. Cloud native computing is a huge change in the way software gets created, deployed, and managed. The cloud native computing movement isn't that old in internet or technology terms. Linus has been working on Linux for 27 years. Cloud native computing and the Cloud Native Computing Foundation was founded in 2015, just four years ago. And it has spawned one of the most successful projects in the history of open source, Kubernetes. But not just Kubernetes, all these other projects that are important components of building, managing, and deploying cloud native applications are now a part of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and being worked on by people and organizations from all over the world. You can see all of the different platinum members of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Just recently, we had companies like GoDaddy, uh, Apple Computer just joined the Cloud Native Computing Foundation at our highest level as a platinum member. But it's not just these companies. China itself, people from China, are the number two collective contributors to Kubernetes. What an amazing change. What an amazing accomplishment. Chinese engagement with the Cloud Native Computing Foundation has been growing year over year over year. Today, 10% of the Cloud Native Computing Found member membership is from China, including 16% of the platinum memberships and 35% of the gold memberships, the highest level. 26% of the certified Kubernetes vendors are from here in China, 19% of the service providers, 32% of our training partners are here in China. To think of it another way, look at this. In 2015, just four years ago, there was one Chinese member of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, Huawei. Huawei led, but has been joined now by 37 other organizations. And today, I'm very excited to announce a new member of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation from here in China. Let's welcome Ant Financial, our newest gold member of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So how does this work? Why is it that competitors can work together through open source to create good outcomes? I mean, like, what, what's left for competitive advantage? You know, if, if everybody shares everything, how can we compete? That's the, that's the major question. And let me show you how. Think of it like a sandwich. Open source today is the vast majority of all code. So if you're writing an application, you might choose a framework like Node.js, as an example. Write some custom code. This is the code that you need for your users or your customers. And then you use NPM packages and common libraries to create and solve problems and build your app actual application. The answer to the question how can you use open source, share most of your code, 90% of your code, and compete? The answer is that 10%, that code that you create for your users and customers, is really, really, really important. And if you had to create everything else by yourself, you wouldn't be able to compete. That's why open source is so important to every single technology company or user in the world. And we see this at the Linux Foundation over and over and over again. Today, the Linux Foundation works across all forms of technology and computing. 
We're the world's largest certificate authority. Let's Encrypt issues millions of TLS certificates that help improve security around the globe. In networking, 80% of the world's mobile subscribers get access to the networks that are using the Linux Foundation's networking projects, things like ONAP, Open Daylight, and others. In cloud computing, we have obviously Kubernetes, Cloud Foundry, others. In automotive, we're working with 12 of the top automakers in the world to create new automobile experiences, new ways to navigate, new ways to experience being inside of a car. In blockchain, our Hyperledger project is one of the fastest growing enterprise implementations of blockchain technology being used in the financial services industry, supply chain industry, and healthcare industry all over the world. Europe, the United States, and in China. In Edge and Embedded, we have real-time operating system projects, and obviously in Web, we have the Node.js project and many, many more. You see, the secret to why open source works is because we've created a positive feedback loop, a sustainable way for people to share software, benefit from it, and reinvest. Big open source projects like Kubernetes and Linux are used to create products, whether it's Alibaba Cloud, Huawei Equipment, whether it's uh, something like the Baidu search platform, those run on Linux. Those products create profits for those companies, and then those companies reinvest in the form of engineers who they employ to work on open source projects, and the project gets better because those engineers take the requirements they had for their products, improve the project, that begets better products, that begets more profits, better projects, more products, more profits. It's a virtuous cycle. Today in Linux, 90% of the core kernel developers are professionals that work in companies here in China, in the United States, Europe, all over the world. And I want to give you an example of a project in a very competitive industry that we just recently launched that I think all of you may be familiar with. We worked with some of the most competitive movie companies, film companies in the world who are now using open source to create really cool movies. Let's check it out. Creative filmmakers today rely more than ever on engineers and scientists using open source software to help craft fantastic visionary images. Every single part of the filmmaking process is touched by software, and a lot of that software is open source software. Some of the greatest innovations we've seen in the modern era of filmmaking have actually been supported by open source software. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and the Linux Foundation have created the Academy Software Foundation with support from industry leaders. The Academy Software Foundation exists to provide a great home for open source projects that we as an industry use every day. Two projects the Academy Software Foundation is currently working on are OpenVDB and OpenColorIO. OpenVDB is a volumetric data block format. It is pretty ubiquitous in use. Anytime we have an explosion, it's VDB. Anytime you have clouds, it's VDB. Anywhere where you have a lot of fluid simulation, fireballs, gas flowing across a surface, things that are big. We think there's value in having an organization outside of DreamWorks take responsibility for this. And I think we've already seen a benefit in that, that we've had other studios step forward in a way they had not previously with contributions to the standard. OpenColorO is an open source color management solution for motion picture production. End to end, everyone working on a show, from an artist at a workstation to a director in a theater, can see the same image and speak the same visual language. OpenColorIO is compatible with ACES and can be used to implement any well-defined color standard. Highly critical projects need oversight, particularly for more than one studio or company, and can benefit greatly from not only the shared development resources, but also the solid infrastructure offered by the Linux Foundation and their involvement in the Academy Software Foundation. Whether you are a user of open source software 
or an engineer or a company that relies on open source software, we want to create the right ecosystem for you to get the most out of the open source software that you need to use. Find us at aswf.io and join the mailing list and see how you can get involved. Pretty amazing. That's right, open source is used to create the movies. So next time you see the Avengers or Spider-Man or you see an explosion in a new movie, remember that movie was created using open source software. And that's the most important thing I want all of you to remember, is that together we're making all these really cool things whether it's cloud computing infrastructure, mobile applications, movies, automotive operating systems, drones, you name it, it's all open source. And the reason it's open source is because open source is not a zero-sum game. You can help yourself, you can help your company, you can help your country at the same time you help others. That's what's important to remember here today. And I want to emphasize that the Linux Foundation is committed to working here with developers, companies, everyone in China. And we have some great news today about some of the new and exciting things that we're going to be doing here in China. First, I want to announce our newest gold member of the Linux Foundation, WeBank. Let's welcome WeBank to the Linux Foundation. Remember how I said open source projects can start anywhere? Well, the FATE project was started here in China by WeBank. This is an industrial grade federated AI learning framework that allows you to use learning architectures and secure computation of any machine learning algorithm. Go check this out, github.com slash webankfintech slash fate. It's an amazing new project started here in China. We think it's going to be big globally as well. Another announcement today, we have a new learning portal online. The Linux Foundation's announcing our open source software university is online now. Go to the Linux Foundation website and check it out. Our courseware is available in Chinese. Uh, please go and look at our new open source software university. We also have our Kubernetes exam launching here in Chinese in China. Today, if you go into the Cloud Native Computing Foundation website or the Linux Foundation website, you can sign up for your super, uh, certified Kubernetes administrator exam right here, right here now. And finally, I want to remind you that this really is a global movement. And KubeCon and CloudNativeCon are not just here in China, but we're going to have an event in November in the United States. We'd like to have you join us. And also in Amsterdam in Europe in 2020. So please join us. We are so happy to be here in China. We have amazing content here this week. Some of the best developers in the world are here to share their thoughts and ideas. Leaders in open source, both from the industry and from the community, are all here. And we are so happy to work with all of you. Because at the end of the day, it's developers like all of you that make open source so effective. So thank you very much and enjoy our event. <laughs>